Well, good morning, everybody. Another glorious day in the house of the Lord. So, we still need to keep the people down in Florida in our prayers. They're still dealing with a lot of things down there. And a lot of people had lost loved ones because of the hurricane. They say that hurricane was the first one to ever hit land three times. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, somebody's hand had to be on that to make it do that. Because normally it just hits land one time and that's it. But it hit three times, so I look at it this way. Maybe some people down there needed to know the power of God and he showed it to them. So, keep them in your prayers, and, and definitely keep D.C. in your prayers. All those snakes up there. But, let it, talk, speaking of prayer, why don't we just go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and Lord, I thank you for this lesson. And Lord, I just ask that you be with the service today. Let the message that's coming not only from me, but from Dr. Cash, touch somebody's heart and soul that they may come to you. I ask all in Jesus' name, amen. But well, last Sunday, we were talking about uh, the nature of man's sin, uh, the nature and effects of sin, which basically what man was doing to, for the sin. Oh, Lordy, I downloaded the same thing from last week. Oh, Lordy. All right, well, you know, Sin is a terrible thing in this world. And we got it going on everywhere. I, you can't turn on the TV without seeing some type of sin on there. <clears throat> but, like I said last week, thank God for gun smoke and the, and the riflemen and, and the old westerns like that. They, 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 they were kept, even, well, the rifleman was, uh, according to Johnny Crawford, when he told Dad this in Vietnam, he, yeah, he joined the service and went to Vietnam and served under Dad's command. And Dad said, aren't you? He goes, yeah, and I want to be treated like any other guy. He said, I don't want my fame to give me any special treatment. But... The show, according to Johnny Crawford and Chuck, no Chuck Connors, they all were Christians. And if you ever watch it and see the basis of the each story, there's a Christian message in it. Now that's when TV shows were good. And I mean, look at, I love Lucy. When they showed the bedroom, there were two separate beds. They weren't going to let nobody have any idea of what's going on in the bedroom. And sin, once you, it gets a hold of you, it's going to drag you down and keep you down. That's 1 John 3, 4 says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of law. In other words, it's against God's law to sin. I mean, he, in Leviticus, there's 630 in it. 
36, over 600 laws. And I've heard many ministers say this. And a lot of them that said it has gone on to be with the Lord. But if you broke, break one of those sins, you break one of those laws, you have broken all of them. So that means every morning we get up, we got to pray. Because a lot of us can remember our dreams, and some of us can't, so you just need to pray that whatever I dreamed last night, Lord, please forgive me of it. And during the day, like Paul said, pray without ceasing. Pray 24-7. And by doing that, it keeps you away from sin. And I know right now, you know, all these TV shows and, and movies and all like that, they got sin going on at left and right. The commercials has got it going on. Like, I remember when I was a kid, most commercials you saw was either talking about candy bar or, or going to the grocery store. Now that there's... Uh, selling everything and most of them, the men t included, are standing there half naked. I mean, back when I was a child, the closest thing they ever showed about a, a body half naked was a mannequin on TV. So, things have changed a whole lot and, and Sin has got a hold of this world and it's tearing us apart. In James chapter 4, verse 17, it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him it is a sin. You don't do good for somebody else, you're sinning. That's basically what that's saying. Uh, we are to help our neighbors. We're to be good stewards to them. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. We can go to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. No matter how many times we slipped and fall. Dad used to say he would have, when he was a child, he had hose on his knees and on the seat of his pants, on the seat of his pants for backsliding on his knees for forgiveness, asking for forgiveness. But a lot of people's like that. The problem is they backsliding so much, they can't turn around and get on their knees no more. And with a lot of these churches shutting down and not opening back up because the pastor was so afraid or the congregation was afraid that somebody might sneeze in there. Yeah. And then the ones that did stay open, they're the wishy-washy type. They want to tell everybody what they want to hear but not what they need to hear. That's one reason I enjoy coming here because Dr. Cash up there, he tells it like it is. Everyone that gets up there and gives the word tells it like it is. There's no dancing around the truth of it. And a lot of these churches today, even the ones on TV, I know back when I was out sick in August, I was watching some of them on TV there's a couple of good ones on there. There's a couple, of, I ain't going to lie, there's a couple of good ones. But there's some on there that, oh, Lord, I don't know where they got their degree or where they got ordained at, but they was not preaching. Yeah. They was up there giving a show. That's all they were doing. Yeah, I mean... If you become a minister, it ain't for the money. Ain't that right, Dr. Cash? 
when you become a minister, it ain't for the cash. And it ain't for a nine-to-five job either. It's a 24-hour job, 24-7. But there's some out there who once they, on Sunday, when they close the door after the daytime service, they don't think about the church or anything else until the evening service. Then they have their little quick evening service. Then they go home and don't worry about nothing else. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's because sin has into those churches. Mark 7, 21 says, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, and murder. That right there is like I was saying with the commercials on TV. You see them women on there half naked or the men on there half naked and you start getting these thoughts. And they wonder how these kids today get out there and do the things they do. I mean, they show it on TV that it's okay. I mean, parents are letting their kids watch it and say, well, it's okay. They're, they're staying quiet. They're staying out of my hair. The best babysitter in the world. That ain't right. I know when I was growing up, if something bad came on television, mom and dad explained it to us. And that's what we need to do today. Because there's so many kids out there sinning today doing drugs, having sex at the age of 12? That ain't right. That's something that should happen when you get married. Husband and wife. Now they're making it look like everything they do, the drugs, the sex, the cussing and all that, is a good thing. That's not a good thing. We gotta, we gotta stop this mess. We gotta get control of our kids and show them the right way. The churches need to, st not not this one, but there's a lot of them out there that needs to grow a backbone and do what they need to do. Stand up and tell the people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. A lot of them just going in there to be a social club. Church is not a social club. It's where you come to be with your fellow Christians and pray to God and listen to what God has in store for you. These people in Florida, we all should be praying for them. I know, I don't know about Biden, know, sending all those generators down there, but what good is a gas generator when you can't get the gas? So we need to pray for them too, because. They're dealing with a lot down there. Um, families losing family members. And a lot of them saying, why did God do this? They're putting the blame on God. It, no, you don't put the blame on God. You ask God for help. The other two locations that struck, they had some damage, but not like it did in Florida. We have a family here that has family members down in Florida. Matter of fact, one of them, 
the day after the hurricane gave birth to a, a baby boy. So that, that, that was a good thing. But this world is so full of sin, we need to stop it. Over the years, it has gotten worse and worse and worse. And we need to put an end to it. We need to put an end to it now. So people out there, if you know somebody who's sinning and needs to know what God has in store for them, bring them to church. That way you plant the seed, then God does the watering. Let us pray. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for this message. Lord, I just ask now that as we go into the rest of the day,